So, you want to become a millionaire. I mean, who doesn't these days? That's got to be like the biggest thing that you see on social media these days is all these pictures of people driving these expensive cars or having expensive houses. And it's just like that's the American dream now is to be a millionaire. And uh, there's a lot of like conspiracies out there. There's a lot of like misinformation out there about what it means to actually be a millionaire because it's a different thing to want to be a millionaire and then to appear like you are a millionaire. Those are two completely different things. Now, um, before I get into this video, I just want to throw this out there to anybody because I know this is how people are sometimes. Um, personally, myself, no, I'm not a millionaire. I'm 21 years old. Um, but I would like to think that I'm on the path of becoming a millionaire because I'm doing all of these things that I have listed out here. And what it is that I do is I study millionaires and I learn from what they're doing because every single person that becomes successful leaves a trail of breadcrumbs. And there's little things you can learn from each person. And that's what I've been doing. So I think I have a lot of good information I can bring to the table. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this video because I'm not just simply making videos here to get views. I'm making videos to bring value forward and to help people on their path to becoming successful themselves. But becoming a millionaire is actually largely based on these two factors. That is restraint and discipline. So it's not so much about how much money you can spend, how big your house is, how large, how much money you're spending on your car. It's not about that at all. In fact, if you're focused on having cars and houses and toys, whether it's guns or whatever it is you want, uh, or expensive vacations, the lavish life, if this is what you're focusing on, you're never going to be a millionaire. You might appear to be a billionaire. Uh, you might have people thinking you're a millionaire, and if that's what you want, then go after that. But that's a separate dream than actually becoming a millionaire, somebody who's worth a million dollars. Having an expensive car and, and a mortgage that's huge and a lot of expensive toys does not make you a millionaire. But if you want to be worth a million dollars, uh, these are the things that you should be doing. I got 10 things here that I want to share with you guys. So the first thing here is to plan. Uh, you want to, your focus, um, oh, sorry, I couldn't remember what I wrote here. A plan focuses you to take action, okay? Uh, if you were going to start a business, would you just fly in blind? Would you just say, okay, yeah, I want to start a bakery. I don't know. I don't know the first thing about a bakery, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, find a building and I'm just going to open up a bakery. Those are the businesses that fail. Uh, and and this, that's the same reason that people who don't have a plan for their finances, a plan for how they're going to earn money, they fail as well. They end up in debt or they end up not making any money. So just as you would a business, you want to plan out your own life. This makes you take action. This makes it so that it's not just a dream of yours. Because there's a lot of dreamers out there, guys. There's a lot of people who dream of becoming successful. People who dream of becoming a millionaire. And uh, if you're just a dreamer... You know, you're never going to take action. you got to have a plan to take action. You have to have a carefully outlined plan with a date and with a lot of factors in there that make it a real thing and not just a dream. So you want to basically figure out in this plan how much money are you saving, how much money are you spending, okay? And then you want to focus on what it is that you can control, which for the most part, at the very start, that is your expenses. I don't care if you're making $1,000 a month, all right? It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're making a hundred dollars a month. All right. I know that's a bit extreme, but you can still figure out what your expenses are and get them as low as possible. That's going to allow you to save more money. That should be your main focus, what you can control. And at the beginning, that's going to be your expenses. If you've screwed up in the past, let's say maybe you made some bad decisions. Uh, you have, uh, you, you know, you maybe you originally bought into that idea of buying millionaire status. You bought the nice cars, you bought the toys, and now you're in debt. Who really cares? There's nothing you can do about that now other than forget the past and work forward. Build a plan for the future. You know, even if you're in debt right now, you can still come back and end up having a lot of money. But if you let that define you, you will never get anywhere. So just say the past is the past. We really can't control that. Let's figure out what we can do going forward. That should be your main focus. But like I said, guys, you want to run your life like a business. You want to have a business plan, and you want to have a plan for your life. You don't just go in there flying blind. Otherwise, your business is going to fail, and ultimately, you won't be a very successful person. You want to look at your life as a business. If you had a business, would it be responsible for the business to spend a lot of money on things that you really didn't need? Likely, you wouldn't be buying those things. But people do this in their own lives, 
for some reason. This is the way their mind is wired. A lot of it has to do with what they see online, what they see on Facebook, all these people driving these new cars, all these luxury car commercials. They tell you that this is what you need to feel this type of way and you don't need it. It's, it's not the key to happiness. What, you're, what they're trying to sell you with those luxury car commercials is the is what you expect to feel when you drive that car and those are always empty promises guys just want to throw that out there uh, okay so number two step number two on becoming a uh, millionaire is your income because it is incredibly difficult to simply save your way to millionaire status I mean maybe if you spend 45 years and your uh, dream is to become a millionaire by retirement that is very easily doable just by being responsible with your savings. But if you're trying to become a millionaire sooner rather than later, it's difficult to just simply save your way to millionaire status. So you have to start to increase your monthly income. So this is what I'm going to tell you guys. And this is actually something that, um, this is, he's kind of a controversial guy, but this is something that uh, Ty Lopez says. He says everybody's focused on making a million dollars or starting a million dollar business when you haven't even started a hundred dollar a month business okay so start by figuring out how to make a hundred dollars a month okay once you figure that out learn how to make five hundred dollars a month and once you figure that out learn how to make a thousand dollars a month don't focus on starting a million dollar business because you probably have no idea how to do that but could you figure out how to make a hundred dollars a month most of us can so start with that and then either scale that idea or come up with a new idea after that. That's some of the best advice I ever got, guys, I gotta say. Because that was always something that held me back. I was like, look, I wanna have a lot of money, I wanna be rich, but how do I start the next huge thing? It's like, why are you focused on that when you can learn how to make $100 a month, learn things in the process, and then build from there? And it's so true, guys. So that's what I would suggest. If you wanna get started with increasing your income, figure out how to make $100 a month and then move forward from there. So, but here's the trick guys. If you're making a thousand dollars more a month and then you're spending another thousand dollars a month, you're just breaking even. You're not working towards becoming a millionaire at that point. You're just basically raising your income and then raising your standard of living with it. You want your standard of living to stay the same while your income increases. That's the only way that you're ever going to get ahead. So if you make another thousand dollars a month and then you say, okay, well, I'm making more money. I deserve a nicer car. That is how you fall behind and that's how you end up breaking even. You're never going to get ahead if you have that mindset. That's the mindset of buying millionaire status with these cars and with the houses and with the lavish life. You can't have that as your focus. It has to be how to save more money and how to let your money work for you. Okay, so how do you go about starting a, a little side business or how do you go about starting uh, to get more income? So you could start a side gig, start a side business. You could educate yourself. That way somebody pays you more money for your skills. Um, you could invest and you could acquire assets. Um, I just want to throw this out there as a plug. If you guys have not read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that should be like the very first thing you do after you watch this video. Uh, that guy is a genius and uh, that's one of the best books that I ever read. That was like the first personal development uh, book that I've ever read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So I would highly recommend that book for anyone looking to understand how to build long-term wealth. That book basically defines for you what is an asset, what is a liability, and it teaches you how to build your assets and how to avoid liabilities and how you can maybe afford that expensive car, but by using your assets to pay for it. So that is one of the best books I ever read. I highly recommend checking that out if you guys are looking to learn more about um, saving money and working towards becoming successful. Number three is investment costs in taxes. Now I know there's a lot of bad, like people have a lot of, there's a lot of bad stigmas out there about millionaires and rich people. It's like, oh, the rich people, you know, they don't have to pay taxes. But the truth is the rich people can afford the lawyers that figure out the tax loopholes. If we all had the money for lawyers, that could figure out how to get as much money through the system without paying as much in taxes, then we could all do what these rich people are doing, but we can't afford the lawyers. The difference is these rich people can't afford these lawyers that help them uh, not spend as much money on taxes as possible. That is like the biggest focus on millionaires, uh, of millionaires is to spend as little money on taxes as possible. Keep as much of their earned money in their pockets as possible, and they're very good at doing this. So that's something you have to start to consider is how much money am I actually paying in taxes? So one of the first things you can do, and you can do this right now, 
you want to maximize your contributions to a 401k because that is tax deferred. Uh, that means you don't pay taxes on it until the age of retirement. The beauty of this is that with a 401k, you take advantage of compounding interest and your interest is allowed to grow tax deferred. So the compounding takes, uh, pay, uh, takes place faster. And then obviously with compounding, the more time you give it, um, the more it will grow. So the earlier you start with this, the better. So you want to, first of all, maximize your contributions to a 401k tax deferred. Second of all, you want to maximize contributions to a Roth IRA outside of your 401k. This is basically the principle of put away as much as you can tax free. Keep as much money away from Uncle Sam as possible. This is how you have to start structuring your brain, the things you have to think about. As far as your investing goes, you want to keep your investment costs as low as possible. So you want to try to trade less frequently and trade as cheaply as possible. Because every time you're paying investment costs, that's money coming out of your investment itself that isn't going to continue to earn money and earn interest and dividends down the road. So you want to keep those costs associated with your investments as low as possible. And then also you want to take advantage of any tax deductions. So don't be lazy when it comes to your tax returns. Don't just pay the taxes because it's going to take a lot of time to itemize stuff and figure stuff out. you got to take advantage of every tax deduction that you can and keep as much of your money as you can for yourself. Number four, income streams. So this comes along, this kind of ties in with um, income. But this is something people don't realize is that millionaires have multiple streams of income, not just one. Most of us have one stream of income, and that is our job. And that's all we have as an income stream, all right? Here's a couple of uh, facts here to throw at you. 65% of self-made millionaires have three income streams. 45% of self-made millionaires have four income streams and 29% of self-made millionaires have five income streams. So that just goes to show they know what they're doing. They know you need multiple streams of income to ever build long-term wealth. And if you have one stream of income, it's going to be extremely difficult to just save your way to that millionaire status. So you have to start developing other streams of income by letting your money work for you at that point. So like I said, that could be a side business, a part-time job for the time being. It could be investing. It could be renting out properties. It could be building online income, building passive income. Passive income is really the best because that's money that kind of, uh, that's, that's something you don't actually have to put in the hours for, you know. At first, it does take a lot of effort to build passive income because a lot goes into it initially. But then down the road, it may become passive at a certain point to where you're just collecting the check. So those are the best income streams because then you're able to use your time to make money in other ways and that continues to earn you money without your involvement so that's the best type of income to develop a part-time job is probably the worst because you have to work every hour for the money that you're making and that's kind of what you're trying to avoid okay number five is to automate so the the number one thing here with this is to automate your contributions to a 401k and automate contributions towards your own savings okay you want to have it automatically come out of your account, automatically come out of your paycheck before you even have a chance to touch it and spend it on something stupid like cars, houses, toys, lavish life. You want to save your money. You want to pay yourself first before you spend your money on stupid stuff. Everybody has this problem where when you see more money in your account, uh, well, most of us have this problem. Even I have this problem. When I have more money in my bank account, I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I can go out and have drinks tonight. Maybe I can go buy that new shirt or clothes or whatever. You know, you end up buying stuff that you don't need. But if you put that money where you can't see it, you forget you have it. And then you're not going to be making those stupid purchases. But basically the other thing that goes along with this too is you want to automate all of your bill payments to save time. Because I, I can't tell you how much time I wasted going in and making my car payment, going in and making my payments to my bank and like for my credit card that I have. Um... Uh, and just so you guys know too, I don't have credit card debt. What I do, I actually made a video on this. Um, I put all my purchases on my credit card to earn cash back and I pay the entire balance at the end of the month. That way I get that free cash back. Because um, if you're paying interest on your credit cards, you're losing money. But if you're actually using credit cards the right way, you can make a little bit of free money that way. So that's what I do. But I was actually like going in and writing checks and giving them that check. And it's like, why are you wasting your time? Uh, you could be using your time making your money or doing something productive and instead you're standing in line at a bank. So automate all of your payments. Number six is going to be investing yourself. 
So this is all about increasing your knowledge and learning from any, anything you can possibly. Just consume knowledge. Just anywhere you see something and you're curious about it, ask that person questions. If you see a book and it piques your attention, read that book. The only thing I want to try to tell you guys to avoid is um, just useless information. So one of the biggest sources of useless information is like news headlines. So if you're just sitting there scrolling through reading news articles, um, unless you're reading like business articles because you're investing. I read a lot of business articles because I invest in stocks. So I read a lot of business articles and I follow up on company news of the companies that I've invested in just to keep track of where I think the stock price is headed. So that kind of news is okay, but I would avoid reading like political news and just, just that constant stream of headlines and just filling your mind with mass information. What that kind of does is it makes you, uh, it gives you a very broad knowledge, but you don't, you're not very deep. So you have a vast knowledge of stuff. You're kind of the jack of all trades, but you don't know a lot about anything specifically. So you want to kind of uh, tune out a lot of that noise and focus on that really good information. So my focus is more on books, podcasts, and maybe longer, I don't know, reports and stuff like that. I tend to try to avoid news articles unless I'm reading about um, business articles specifically. But um, yeah, so I, like I said, do read the books. And the thing with books too, um, I, I know this probably sounds like a joke, but it, when I was researching this, I was watching a couple other videos out there about tips for becoming a millionaire just because I kind of wanted to see what areas I could improve on. Um, somebody, somebody else said read books, and this is something a lot of people say because it's so true. But somebody actually commented below and said, well, like when you say books, do you mean like Harry Potter? And I'm like, I, I actually like laughed out loud and uh, nobody had replied to the guy. So I replied to him and I was kind of like, um, I think he means like personal development books. So let me just specify to you guys, Harry Potter is not going to make you a millionaire unless you wrote Harry Potter. Um, so when we say read books, um, what we're talking about is like personal development books, books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich, um, The 4-Hour Work Week, any books like that that really help you learn skills or anything like that that helps you develop yourself as a person. Um, maybe you read Harry Potter for a leisure activity and it's important to have leisure activities, so if you're doing that, continue to do so. But if you're not somebody who reads and you're trying to become a millionaire, uh, I would not recommend starting with Harry Potter. I'm just going to throw that out there. So. Also important is to write and start a journal. Um, so as you know, with history, history repeats itself. So if you find that you have habits that are really bad, maybe you have bad spending habits, start a journal about how you feel and maybe you can start to figure out what it is that triggers you to spend money on things you don't need. And you can learn from the past as to not repeat it in the future. And it's also good just to start a journal to keep track of your own life and your own development. So I recommend reading as well as writing. And then also I have on here, listen to podcasts. I listen to a lot of different podcasts. Um, learn new things. Uh, what you wanna do here is become a well-rounded genius. You don't wanna become somebody who is just like, you have a very vast knowledge, but you don't have a very deep knowledge. That's the kind of person who sits and reads news articles and they can pull little tidbits out but they don't really have a deep knowledge of stuff. They're just kind of like, they're good for parties because they can pull out little tidbits and they're creative. But if you ask them uh, something deep about a topic, they probably will have no idea what they're talking about. Um, so you want to basically consume knowledge like it's food keeping you alive. I mean, look at people like Warren Buffett. He's like one of the richest people in the world. And uh, I know he reads like multiple books every single day. So that just goes to show, um, you know, knowledge, brings you wealth because it, it just helps you learn and continue to learn and be able to identify things. And uh, it just grows your brain. Um, so just to focus on getting knowledge into your brain and learning as much as you can from the world and from books and resources. I mean, if you want to become a millionaire, read books about millionaires, read books about how they did it, um, read biographies, learn from people's mistakes. So this is probably the most important one. I can't stress this one enough is invest in yourself. Um, number seven is your lifestyle and credit. So you want to be frugal with your lifestyle and you want to avoid luxury as much as possible. You want to buy what you need, not what you desire. Okay. So buy the bare minimum. I'm not telling you, you have to live inside a cardboard box and eat white bread every day. It's very important to take care of your health 
and to eat good quality foods and to reward yourself once in a while. I'm just saying avoid blatant luxury. Like you don't need to spend uh, $50,000 on a car. Maybe you could spend a lot less and avoid all those luxury features that are going to depreciate in value. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be frugal when it comes to what you're eating and your own health because if you're not healthy, what's the point of even being a millionaire if let's say you're rich and you're, you're in poor health and you're at risk for a heart attack? Who wants that life? I, I certainly don't. So don't be frugal when it comes to your own health, but unnecessary luxuries, definitely be frugal with those. Um, what you're doing basically is you're sacrificing today for a better tomorrow because all the money that you're not spending on these luxury items is money you can save and money that can grow interest over time and it ends up being a lot more money down the road. You want to avoid credit like the plague. So do not put anything on credit cards. Um, the only reason, like I said, that I do it is because I'm getting that cash back bonus and I pay it off every single month. So it's just a way for me to get some free money and help me build my credit. But uh, if you can avoid credit, don't use it. You know, And if you're not responsible with credit cards, don't even use them for that cash back. Just, just don't even use them, don't even open them. If you can't afford it right now and you really don't need it, um, don't use the credit card. I'll just throw an example out there of like a time when I had a friend of mine who really did need to use credit. Um, he was like completely out of money at this time. His car battery died and he ended up having to take out a credit card to buy that car battery. Otherwise, he literally could not have left the store. He was getting an oil change and his car battery died, they could not get it to go back. He could not get his car to turn over again. So that's a scenario where, yeah, you have no choice. If you don't take out a credit card to pay for your battery, you're not leaving that store that day. So yeah, if you need it for something that's a necessity, that's different, but don't use credit cards to buy clothes and stuff that you really don't need. Um, number eight is your exposure. I'm sure you've heard this saying before that you become what you surround yourself with. Uh, I'm sure you've seen like in high school, maybe the kids that hang around, that hung around those older kids that were doing drugs. Did you ever find that those kids ended up the ones that were older and doing drugs as well? It, it, you, you tend to become what you surround yourself with. And uh, if you surround yourself with successful people, you tend to become successful. If you surround yourself with people who are below you, uh, people who are not high achievers, you don't tend to be a high achiever either. You tend to fall where they are as well. So you want to surround yourself with people who are more successful than you, people who have more money than you. You want to surround yourself with success. If you're trying to get in shape, the best thing to do is surround yourself with people who are in shape so they can teach you and you are um, basically trying to keep up with them. That's what's going to help you get in shape. The same principles apply to saving up money and becoming wealthy. You want to remember this too, guys. Millionaires think differently about money than the middle class and the lower class do. So you, you wanna ask a lot of questions and figure things out from them and learn from what they've done and what's worked for them. Number nine is to experiment. You don't want to be afraid of risk as long as it is well thought out and as long as you learn something from it, okay? One of my favorite sayings out there is, there is no lose. You're either going to win or you're going to learn. And it's so true. I've, I've made a lot of money and I've lost a lot of money, but every time I've lost money, I've learned something, so I don't even care about it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying go out there and like as an experiment say, okay, my experiment this weekend is I'm gonna take a thousand dollars to the casino and see if I make any money. That's not learning, that's gambling, okay? But if you really wanted to invest in a certain stock and you spent a lot of time researching it and you were like, yes, it's risky, but I really want to do this and try it out, that's a good idea because you're going to learn something. But going and just throwing money away and going and being like, okay, I'm going to go gamble and see if I learn anything. That's just stupid. Don't do that. But if you're actually going to learn from it, it's a good idea to experiment. Uh, I, what I say is that you want to treat your life like a science experiment. You want to try new things and you also want to test your new ideas as quickly as possible. So if you have an idea, go all in and if it doesn't work, nip it in the bud and come up with another idea. That'll help you come across to your big idea sooner. Because a lot of people don't realize this, I didn't realize this for a long time, but some of the biggest failures out there are millionaires in terms of the fact that they fail over and over and over and over and over again until they finally are right. So you wanna just make sure you're failing forward. So if you have an idea and it's a complete terrible idea, just forget about it and come up with a new idea and learn as much as possible about it, test it as fast as possible. If it works, 
Congratulations. If not, come up with a new idea. Don't let the past affect the future as far as saying, oh, I failed five times. I should just give up. Just keep pushing forward. Keep testing new ideas and treating your life like a human science experiment. Okay, number 10. Uh, this is what we already touched on talking about rich dad, poor dad. This is assets versus liabilities. This is a pretty simple one. You just want to learn the difference between assets and liabilities, then increase your assets and decrease your liabilities. I'm not really going to get into this because I just, I highly recommend that book and I just want to throw this out there. I am in no way being paid by Robert Kiyosaki to push this book. I just, this book was so beneficial to me and it helped me realize a lot of the problems I have with my own finances that I just recommend this book to anybody who asks me about books. It's generally the first book I recommend to people. Uh, there's YouTube videos out there that'll talk about assets versus liabilities that would, I'm sure, help you learn the difference between these two. But I just know there's a lot of good resources out there, and I don't think I can do it justice by talking about it here. So I'm going to just kind of point you guys in the right direction as uh, something you want to learn about to um, kind of like a point of interest here for you guys. But all right, that's pretty much all I got for this video. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please consider um, dropping a like, and then feel free to leave me a comment as well if you guys liked anything, or if you hated the video, leave me a comment too. Um, if you have ideas for future videos, you can also leave those in the comments. And then if you are interested in being notified of future uploads, please consider subscribing. But uh, I thank you guys for watching this video.